Let us consider what we understand by capital good and what we understand by capital. Though they may appear to be the same thing, they actually are not. They are radically different in nature. Well, we will use the term capital good to refer to each of the higher order economic goods Karl Menger writes about. In other words, each of the intermediate stages which the actor subjectively views as such and through which he believes he must pass before achieving his much desired end. So, from an economic standpoint, it is not the physical essence of a resource which gives it the nature of a capital good, but rather the fact that an actor believes it will help him accomplish or complete one of the stages in his action process. Therefore, each of these intermediate stages we must pass through materializes in the form of a capital good. As an example, let us imagine a specific production process or action. We are hungry, and we are going to creatively satisfy our need with a fried egg. But before we arrive at a golden, perfectly prepared fried egg on our plate, with a pinch of salt on top, and ready to be eaten, yum, which would be the final stage, the first order economic good, we must entrepreneurially pass through a series of prior stages higher order economic goods, which we must complete before we can accomplish the end we so desire. Now we come to second order economic goods, which make up the stage immediately prior to final consumption. We have the cracked egg we are about to drop into the boiling oil, and we can go further back, and our frying pan is still at the store, and the oil is being bottled. But we can go further back, to the company which molds the frying pan out of a sheet of steel. And with respect to the oil, the olives must be pressed, and the oil stored at an oil mill. But we can go further back, to the blast furnace, where the sheet of steel is made. And we can go even further back, to recently extracted iron ore at the entrance of a mine. And we can go further back. Well, each of those intermediate stages takes the form of a capital good. The iron ore at the mine entrance is a capital good. The block of steel that comes out of the blast furnace is a capital good. The machine used to mold the frying pan is a capital good. The frying pan in the store window before we buy it is a capital good. And the frying pan in our kitchen just before we fill it with oil is a capital good. Each one of the prior stages we must pass through in an action or production process before we arrive at the final consumer good materializes in the form of a capital good. And take note, it is not the inherent physical composition of a good which makes it a capital good but the fact that someone subjectively believes it will help her achieve an end. Thus, a wrench is a capital good, but not per se. It is only so if I think, ah, this will help me tighten a nut, fix my car, or accomplish some other end. Then I insert the good into the structure of an action process, into one of the successive stages, and at that moment it becomes a capital good. The necessary condition for the production of capital goods is saving, understood as the giving up of immediate consumption. This is very important, and we will be studying it. Saving is defined in economic terms as the giving up of immediate consumption. Whenever I could consume something today, that is, achieve today an end that is of value to me, but I decide to not achieve that end today, but instead to postpone the satisfaction of that end into the future, I am saving. When you decided to not start working right away to earn some money, but instead to postpone for four years going to work, so you could finish your degree, you were saving. Saving means giving up immediate consumption. And by the term consumer good, we understand first-order good, which is a good that directly satisfies human needs. 
In other words, the end one seeks to achieve. When I postpone the achievement of an end into a more distant future, I am saving.